I'm going to also talk about transitions. Um, transitions are really hard for our concrete thinking kids. Our kids don't like to have change. Um, I'm, I'm married to someone like That's that, actually. They don't like change. <laughs> no, they don't like change. They don't like change that they're not prepared for, let's put it that way. And I'm going to quote Dr. Ross Green, too, from his book, The Explosive Child, that many children with executive function deficits and skills deficits, uh, social skills, language processing deficits, anxiety and or sensory integration issues. Why didn't he just say Tourette syndrome? Are inflexible and explosive. These kids are inflexible and explosive. They have a tough time shifting cognitive set, you know, a tough time planning, organizing, and using working memory, which is thinking along multiple lines at the same time. Um, that working memory is fascinating to me because I gave someone near and dear to me that. The short test for working memory, you know, there's my, actually my mother had just had the test of screening for Alzheimer's, she's fine. But um, then I went home and gave my uh, important person a, the same test on working memory. We asked him to remember three words and then we discussed something else and then I asked him to recall those words. He couldn't do it. He didn't know what I was talking about. Um, this person has a doctorate, you know. This person is not an ignorant person, but he doesn't have the working memory. He's also the most prolific list maker I've ever seen in my life. He writes lists upon lists. He writes, writes lists of what to do to get up in the morning. He writes lists of what to do during the morning, uh, lists that are a month out, a week out, a day out. Um, his boss was really glad when he retired because all those yellow sticky notes all over the place disappeared. <laughs> but he's learned a skill, and I'm trying to get him to pass that skill on to his, his grandchildren. I think it's a very good skill. Um, but this, the children also have trouble making transitions because of not recognizing social cues or difficulty understanding language and having that that not, not having that wait time. Um, so for instance, the problems are moving from task to task. Problems can occur when the child is asked stop, to stop working on your art project, put the materials away, and sit still and listen to a story. Well, this isn't easy for a kid with Tourette syndrome because they don't want to stop. <laughs> they want to finish their art project and then they can't remember the next two instructions. Um, so you have to talk them through the transition. And that's the beginning of how to make transitions with a person with Tourette syndrome. Um, the adults can cue him to the upcoming transitions, um, whoever is working with that child, and let him know that in 10 minutes we're going to be doing this, in 20 minutes we'll be outside, and so forth. Get him thinking along those lines. It, and it might be just as, as simple as saying to the child, instead of, you know, we're going to be doing this and you'll have to finish up your art project, be more concrete and just say, just glue this to this and then put it away. You know, something more concrete. Um, anticipate in situations that may produce anxiety and devise strategies ahead of time, like making a to-do folder. Well, these are the things I have to do, you know, a different folder is the one with the things that are done. Um, write down that locker combination in several places so that they can't, don't have to worry about remembering it. Um, be aware of whether that strategy increases anxiety again. Okay, and then there's cognitive, cognitive behavior therapy, which is a broad term, and it just involves a lot of you know, it just involves shifting the way you're thinking so it can shift the way you feel. Um, the, it's based on the idea that our thoughts cause our feelings and behaviors. And I think a lot of us could stand some cognitive shifting <laughs> sometimes. We get stuck. Um, transitioning from one class to another is really kids difficult for kids with Tourette's. They, 
uh, struggle to remember what to take from one class to the next class, and some kids take everything with them because they don't trust themselves that they'll remember the right things, so they just load up everything they'll need all day. Um, the noise and commotion in the hallway, maybe too much sensory input, and then there's the chance that what if uh, I see someone that I like and I don't know what to say to her. Um, it's helpful to have an, the accommodation of leaving a class three minutes early, N not just for um, finding their way and getting organized, but also the sensory problems that they have. Um, they can make checklists and check them out when no one's looking when they're out in the hallway. Um, I remember visiting my son's middle school those years when he was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade and walking into the school building and it happened to be time for class to change and I heard this very loud, loud bawling, very loud crying and sure enough it was my son. He was walking down the hallway, very, very upset and crying out loud, you know. Um, it was very, very heartbreaking. And I didn't know what was wrong. I didn't know about sensory overload at the time. Uh, he might have been coming from his science class where the teacher confiscated his recorder. Uh, a lot of different things could have been happening, but um, uh, he, he was not doing well in that crowded classroom at all. Um, put up schedules in several places. That helps a, a child deal with his anxiety uh, point. My son had this, an, a trusted adult that he could count on for help whenever he felt really anxious. He could slip into the school, school psychologist's office. She was his savior. Um, and then make sure there's a backup for the trusted adult if she's not there. Okay, transitioning from home to school is also difficult for kids. Mornings. They're terrible, right? Um, I like to say it's the trip from bed to bus to biology class. It does not go well. <laughs> uh, it's a huge challenge. Um, medications, tics, anxiety might have made it difficult for the child to sleep at night. So hence, it's difficult for them to get up in the morning. Um, and it's uh, hard to wake up. And then there's somebody telling them every five minutes, you know, get moving, hurry. You know, it's loud because they're yelling upstairs to them, and that's sensory problems. Um, then they have to remember all the orders of doing things, you know, breakfast, brush teeth, um, did, do I have my lunch, do I have my lunch money, um, what's going on after school, do I have a permission slip, uh, and then what do I do when I get on the bus because who's going to be there, are they going to bug me again? Uh, but tactics can be taught and applied and become some tools that the kid could use for the rest of his life. Um, I have a brother-in-law with OCD. He lines up everything on the table for the morning. He, er, he has it right on the corner of the table and everything he needs the next day, his schedule, his phone, everything the night before, he lines it all up so he doesn't remember everything. When my sister gets nasty, she switches things around. <laughs> um, so look at the problem areas that the child with anxiety has. Try to break them down and give them, a help, give them some help. Uh, show them how to be a list maker. Help him make his lunch at night after dinner and pack his backpack. Um, you know, it isn't a crime for adults to handle some of these things for a child while they're learning. Um, do some of those things for him. For, make sure he has the permission slip. Don't expect him to remember it all. I think I would have done a lot more of that if, in retrospect. Um, then the transitions from school to a new school begin early in the year before the child goes to the next school. Um, let, him, let him visit the building, meet the principal, the teachers, school psych, counselor, other support people that he may come in contact with. And a lot of schools do this, but they do it at the end of the year before they go to the new building. And that doesn't give them enough time. And then it, doesn't, it isn't inclusive enough. It doesn't take in all those areas that are going to be anxiety producing for, for the child with Tourette's. So develop a plan for the next year and make sure the stu student's part of it and he signs it too. When we moved from one school district to another, my husband and I interviewed the director of special ed to make sure they knew what Tourette syndrome was um, before my husband accepted a new job, actually. 
and uh, the director of special ed did, and then he went further. There were three high schools in town, and he recommended one of them. And he said, I would have your son go to that high school because it's um, a nice wide range of, of kids and ethnic backgrounds and social economic levels, and he won't stand out like he would at this other cliquish kind of school over there or that one where the, all the kids are from this particular school. And it was a very good choice. He was very helpful. Um, and then my son didn't mind starting a new school. He felt it was a good new start, you know, a good place for him to be. And then moving from school to life. Um, the IDEA does provide for transition planning, and I would suggest this start, well, it's supposed to start by the time um, the first IEP plan with transition planning should be um, in effect when they turn 16, according to law. Well, it's 16 right now, isn't it, Kathy? It's, it's 16 federally. There, oh, some federally. Of the, yeah, yeah some, federally. Of the, some of the states do it lower. They, there is a bill in, in Congress right now to change it to 14, but it's in committee somewhere. In Florida? Florida. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, it's 14 That's in great. Massachusetts, too. That's great. It isn't. Yeah. It's it's 16 in Arizona. Okay, so that tells it's you. It's 16 how in New York. <laughs> Some of us are progressive. Yeah, <laughs> but my yeah. Well, yeah. My state. My my son didn't have the planning. Um, uh, they attempted to, but it happened. You know, his senior year when he informed them that he was going into the military, and they said, okay. Well, it didn't work out. He did go into the military, but it didn't work out. My son wasn't on medications, but the stress, the anxiety from being in the military caused his tics to become so severe, which they had never been before, that they discharged him after a year and a half. And it was a very sad time in his life because he really, it was desert storm. He really had a lot of um, patriotism and wanted to go. My son was going to college, and uh, we were talking about going to college. We live in Massachusetts, and he said to me something about where he was going to go to school, and I said, you can go to school anywhere east of the Mississippi River. So he's saying, well, I kind of go to a particular school he named it. It was in California. And I said, honey, last I looked, that was not east of the Mississippi River. Um, so he, we were looking at schools, and the behavioral therapist that we were working with said to me, you're transitioning him to college. He needs to be within a two-hour driving distance of you. That changed everything what we were doing. Um, so transitions from high school to college, all these different transitions are very difficult. We did find, actually, we, we did find the perfect school for him, which was an hour and 15 minutes away. Of course, he only applied to that school. He applied early decision. And I'm, I'm like, OK, so where else are you applying? Oh, they're going to accept me, Mom, which of course they did, but it made me crazy. <laughs> but it was very, very important that the behaviorist said, no, no, he can't go more than two hours because you don't know how he's going to do. And he actually did very well. But these kinds of transitions, you have to take so much into account. And as educators, you need to help counsel parents in terms of what will work and what won't work. My son didn't start college until he was, uh, I think he was 27, when he finally put the picture together and decided that he really did need to go to college. And that was beyond the time that mom and dad were offering any help, so he was on <laughs> his own. Uh, but he had married, and his wife understood disabilities, and she was a very encouraging to him and helped him quite a bit. At one point, he, he's, he too, a very creative writer, poet, music, writes music, um, and that was his first love, and he was majoring in, in uh, creative writing. And the teacher that he had for creative writing kind of popped onto them a writing assignment in class one day that he hadn't told them about ahead of time. And um, my son blew. He just blew his top. He just, you didn't tell us about this. We weren't prepared. I, I just had, we had other plans, you know. And he got very angry and ran out of, the, slammed the door, ran out of the classroom. Not, not like my son, but he was obviously oh, dealing with a lot of anxiety at the time. And he went, he went home, his wife was there, and he told her what happened. And she said, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to uh, the professor's office, and you're going to apologize and explain about your Tourette's. And he said, he knows I have Tourette's. 
well, they went to the office and he started, he apologized and started explaining and the professor said, oh, my wife is a special ed teacher so I've already found all out about Tourette's from her and I understand. So it worked out for him. It was a good lesson for him too, a good life lesson. But these transitions, problem transitioning, stay with the person with Tourette's, even as an adult. It's difficult for him to have plans change. If, if we would promised to be at his house on a certain date and we decide we're gonna make it two days later, that is, you know, he's got a plan it way ahead and he, he wants, he's get it in his mind, but of course his father's the same way, you know, he's, <laughs> he's planned our whole summer already, so you get used to it, thank you.